Justin, welcome back and happy Friday. Happy Friday. How's your week been? Been great. Always, uh, always fun being in the uh, space that we live in and talking to all of our customers. So happy, happy Friday and happy coffee chat. Happy coffee chat. Um, so today, welcome back everyone. We're going to talk about enterprise workflow and, and what the heck that is, why it's important, uh, what our customers are experiencing with it, uh, talk about some different use cases and really dive into to the enterprise workflow space as a whole. Um, so just starting out, you know, what is enterprise workflow in your eyes, Justin? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, when we think about CPS, we have our business process automation division. And inside of that division, we have really two different platforms that we leverage. One is enterprise workflow and one is RPA. So, you know, I know we're here to talk about enterprise workflow. So, you know, just to understand where that kind of fits in our, our organization. So when we talk about enterprise workflow, really it's a platform that enables your organization to optimize and automate your business processes. So when you, when you think about why companies are using this, it's, it's usually around some type of business process. It's a platform, it's independent. We always advocate for uh, an enterprise workflow platform being independent of your line of business systems. And, and really, you know, some, some people, when I talk, you know, they, they may say, okay, well, we're automating and optimizing business process. What's a business process. So really, you know, simply put a business process is any task or collection of tasks in your organization that you do part of, you know, your main, uh, process of, you know, fulfilling orders or doing quotes or, or creating products or, or anything of that nature. So there's lots of business processes. And with enterprise workflow, we really are focusing on automating, you know, your mission critical processes, and we're leveraging a platform to do so. Okay, okay. So a couple of things I heard there, um, platform being one of them, and an independent platform being another one. So let's talk to me about, uh, you know, what a, what a platform means. Um, and then we'll talk, I also want to hear what, what the importance of independent platforms are, because we hear, uh, you know, customers that a lot of SAP customers or Microsoft customers or, or Salesforce customers or any name the system that, that continue to invest within that system. So I want to hear, you know, what the, the pros and cons and, and what that, uh, how that impacts someone. Awesome. Yeah. So let's start out with the platform conversation. So uh, when we say enterprise workflow, that's a platform. It really is comprised of, of a couple different components uh, within that platform. So first and foremost, there's a form and workflow component. Um, a lot of organizations say, well, we already have a workflow tool. It's, you know, a Salesforce has a workflow tool. Microsoft Dynamics has workflow inside of it. Um, but we're, we'll get in like your second question there, Trevor, what is an independent platform? We'll get into that, but we'll just say, you know, a component of enterprise workflow is certainly a form and workflow component. And there's two different types of components that we see within that space. We see process driven apps, which is your traditional uh, form and workflow with approval, but we also see an onset of data driven apps being able to have a screen that has all of the collective data, either from one system or multiple systems. And when you hit save, then it actually saves into your line of business systems and it can save into one system or multiple. So form and workflows are certainly a, a critical component of an enterprise workflow platform, but there are also other components. So the other components that we think about with enterprise workflow are integrating to multiple systems whether they're your ERP, CRM, or there are other business systems you use every day like DocuSign or um, systems like uh, Microsoft Office and SharePoint and, and the email and Outlook. So uh, there's lots of systems that you can integrate with in your business that are core to your business. So you certainly, when you're having this enterprise platform, you wanna make sure A, this platform can integrate with multiple systems. The second component is a mobile component. You know, a lot of companies are, are using mobile devices for their workforce. You know, they're not necessarily in the office every single day. So how do we do approvals? How do we enter orders? How do we pull up customer information? Well, having a mobile component certainly uh, is important for a uh, platform like this. 
And then we'd also say um, we're seeing um, portals be important for, for enterprise workflow platform because portals, whether it's a customer portal, a vendor portal, whether it's a department portal, HR, for example, you know, allowing uh, our departments, our organizations to create web pages and create processes and forms and workflows on those so that you can have a single place to go to uh, for any type of automation. You know, if you're at an HR, for example, maybe you need to fill out a time off request or you need to fill out an expense report. Those are all things that could be put on this kind of portal. And then the last thing I would say around this platform perspective is you have to have some type of ability to store the data somewhere. So with an enterprise workflow platform, you can do your traditional storing of data in you know, Microsoft SQL, you can store it in Excel, or you can store it in Salesforce or SharePoint. You can store the data on multiple data sources, but if you don't have access to those, then as a business user, you need to be able to save data within the platform. So the enterprise workflow platform should save data. Um, so I know that's a lot of components, you know, breaking down those components, but each one of those components are very, very important to an enterprise to roll this out across the enterprise. So that we say it's enterprise workflow, we say, what is enterprise workflow? Why are we saying enterprise workflow? It's because it's meant for the enterprise. It's meant for all business users, all IT, to be able to integrate and automate all of your business processes. So that's that's your first question and a, a long answer. I'll take a, a, a little slip of coffee. Maybe you have any questions around that before we get into the independence of this. Yeah, one, one follow-up question where, like you just said, we're, we're calling it enterprise workflow and we're talking about, I heard you say IT and business users and everyone's involved. Um, you know, how are those different different groups and departments involved? Is this something that, that we see more success, you know, being IT dri driven and led, business driven and led, because in, in this technology space, um, you know, there are a lot of different ways that you can roll things out and, and sustain them and be successful with them. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you know, what we're seeing in the market is that there's not enough IT resources um, but IT, uh, the, cu the customers we talk to, IT has to govern and put the guide rails around this. So what's nice with an enterprise workflow platform is having that complete governing layer. A lot of past vendors that you know, had some type of workflow capability or drag and drop for forms, they don't have that governing aspect. So to make it enterprise, to make it um, that IT wants to use this platform and be able to govern it, then that is the perfect onset of uh, a, a good, good for companies to roll it out enterprise-wide. The second component is it has to be easy for business users to actually use the platform. So when we talk about business users, we typically are talking at the low to no code side, side of this. An enterprise platform really has, I would say, two different people that can, can use the platform. Business users, non-technical type people to be able to create, automate business processes, integrate. And then there's those technical pro developers, professional developers. They have some type of background. They want to extend. They have a programming experience. They want to extend or govern the application. Those are your kind of two different segments of people that work with it. But what's nice around business users is it's really about creating what I would say um, many applications. With IT-led projects, usually they go very deep in an organization, they're very mission critical, and they only do one to five projects a year. With business users, the onset of we need it now and there's lots of processes we need to automate, you know, business users are creating hundreds if not thousands of apps a year. So um, it's nice for business users because they get that benefit that they can automate. It's governed by IT. It, it to, to me, truly is a, a perfect way to bring business and IT together. Got it. Okay. I like that. Um, so back to, back to the one question uh, that we were talking about earlier that, that I wanted to touch on this, this idea of an independent platform, because even um, being in the data and analytics, being my focus, I, I see it a lot where, where a customer, it's 
you know, I almost think of it like a mindset. Like we, we've spent money with, with X vendor, with X technology. So we're going to continue to spend money with X vendor, X technology. You know, what does that, what does that mean? Um, how have we seen that impact different people? Yeah. I mean, we, we truly believe in this independence and setting yourself free from, you know, these line of business vendors. And so, you know, when, when you're thinking about these big, vendors and them acquiring different components and they say well it all fits in together it's under one umbrella one company well that company acquired these components and they don't always talk and work together you know part of an integration and so even though some co companies say okay well we've invested in microsoft or we invested in, in sap well, so Microsoft and SAP acquire a lot of different companies and sometimes your data doesn't share. It depends on the integration team and how the, the product development and the roadmap goes. But one thing that you know I always talk to um, a lot of our customers about is if you think about uh, Salesforce, for example, they have a workflow engine. Well, Salesforce was created as a CRM system and now they've evolved into a lot bigger system. And as they've evolved, they've had to create workflow for approvals, for example. And so all of these products and these SaaS companies or these, these companies in general are creating workflow because of a necessity to, because there's a business process that's in their platform and they need some type of approval. But what they're not doing, a line of business vendors not doing is not looking at the global market and saying, what does the market need? Well, AI and ML are starting to happen. How do we integrate with Microsoft and Azure, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google? How do we integrate with these platforms? Well, then we have RPA starting to, to be an emerging technology. How do we integrate with that? Like we'll say Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism, um, UiPath, all of those RPA vendors, Salesforce, you know, SAP, they're not worried about integrating with that, those technologies, but you must integrate with those technologies if you understand the space of business process automation and enterprise workflow. So all of these different um, vendors, they care about one thing themselves and selling you more licenses for their product, right? Like, just like you said, it's all, all about them. It's all about, you know, buy more components. What else can we sell you? We'll get you tied in so much that you can't ever leave us. And so if you think of this independent layer, you have your line of business up top, you have your independent layer, and then you have all your data and processes below. If we switch out the line of business system, whether that's SAP, Epicor, Dynamics, Salesforce, you name any line of business system up top here, if you want to switch those out because you have that independent layer and you've automated all your business processes and data is down here, then you can simply just replace the last 25% of it. So you're not tied to Salesforce, you're not tied to Microsoft or, or SAP. So it really, truly, uh, I would say, gets that independent feeling that you can change your business and navigate your business as you see fit. You can acquire more companies. If you acquire more companies, they have different ERPs, you don't care because you're, you've automated your business processes, quote to order, order to cash. All you need to do is integrate with those different systems. So it sounds like, you know, the word that I would boil that down to is, is flexibility and agility. You know, as, as business needs, demands, things change by having the independent platform, you, you keep that consistency. The business users see the consistency and, and things don't get quite as shaken up when changes happen. Yep, you got it. It is. It is all about that flexibility, scalability, agility of the business and being able to change. You know, I always always like to give a couple of use cases to kind of concrete in, you know, the what customers do with an enterprise workflow platform. So, you know, we kind of talk what an enterprise platform is. And so a lot of use cases, I, I split them into really three different buckets. There's core use cases that have been around for a long time and customers have been automating this. And that's where CPS has spent most of our life uh, in these core use cases. But then there's these adjacent and transformational that are starting to really hit the market. So, you know, just some quick examples uh, to line this out is really uh, you think about a contract approval. You have a contract, legal terms and conditions, you know, uh, warranties, things of that nature. 
I need that contract to be reviewed by legal, reviewed by certain business owners, and then approved. You know, that's that's a typical enterprise workflow process. We also think of things like simple things like onboarding a customer. When you onboard a customer, there's a lot of departments that interact with credit checks and making sure that they're set up correctly in the system, that we have their address information correct, we have their banking information. There's a lot that goes with you know, customer onboarding uh, so that we can actually you know, invoice that customer at the end of the day. So an onboarding process is, is certainly one of those core areas that we've been automating a lot of uh, customer vendor. You can think on the engineering and manufacturing, like an engineer change request or new product development. All of those business processes core to an organization because you're 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 changing product, you're you're creating product, and and you the, the faster time to market you can get that that product to market faster than the more that you're going to sell and, and have that competitive advantage. So um, maybe the last core use case example is like a purchase order request or a capital expenditure in the finance area. You know we're seeing a lot of financial automation and transformation. So you know, PO requests are certainly uh, ones that have multiple levels of, of approval. You know, if it's a PO for 50,000 versus 500 million, you know, there's a lot of different um, approvals that have to happen, a lot of documentation that has to go through it. So that's kind of core use cases. Just some examples for adjacent and transformational. When you think about this enterprise workflow, we think about all those different components and all those integrations and new technology. One example is like an engineering change request that has AI and ML built into it. So, you know, you need to create, you're doing a new product, a new, new drawing, and, you know, you're thinking, well, we're going to make this material and we're going to, we're going to make it at this one plant. Well, if you have AI and ML built in it, AI and ML is looking and looking over your environment and saying, you know, what's our capacity at that plant? Are these machines up? And traditional business processes, you know, it's just an approval and then you're done and, and humans have to interact with it. Well, if you have AI looking over your environment and says, hey, these machines are done, down, we don't have capacity, we need to change your workflow instantly without a human even thinking about it, instantly change it to be a, a purchase part that we're going to go procure this from the market. You can do that in these adjacent, these uh, adjacent use cases uh, because of you know this platform this enterprise workflow can integrate with ai and ml other examples is like a chatbot a lot of people are, are implementing chatbots on their website you know whether it's for customer support or service requests so you can think about a chatbot and somebody saying you know please provide your first name last name your email address okay what's your request well we have a currently we have our x product is not working okay, thank you, we're gonna start a uh, service request, an internal service request, here's your service request number, will a customer or service technician will be in contact shortly. So all through a chat bot that didn't involve a human, that's automated responses, then it starts our internal processes for service requests. So those are some adjacent use cases, there's many more uh, from that perspective, and maybe the last you know, bucket I'll hit on is transformational, which is really what I would say is all around the customer experience, the employee experience, and what I would say is a connected enterprise. So you can imagine the day that every line of business system that you have, everything you interact with is all connected. That's transformational. That's, that's changing your enterprise. There's even this concept that Gardner's put out there on a composable business and being able to do multiple businesses within one business. And how do we do that? Well, with an enterprise workflow being connected, people focusing on the tasks that they're assigned, then you can actually be processing a service request for company A, but then get another service request for company B with di two different models, all within a connected enterprise. It really talks about transformational and multiple business and how to diversify. And so it is a uh, it is a lot, you know, the use cases out there, there's a lot of people are focusing on the core, they're moving in adjacent and transformational, but Enterprise workflow platforms are the platforms that will be independent. They'll really change in how you automate, scale your business to you know this next next uh, evolution. It's very powerful stuff. Um, okay, well I think we're we're about at our time. 
Um, so I want to say thank you, Justin, for, for your passion and, and, and education as always. It's, it's a pleasure to talk to you and, and pick your brain a little bit. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you all next time. Excellent. Thanks everyone. We'll talk later. Thanks Trevor. Bye.